This is Dr. Rich Shuttler with lesson number four, research, method, and design. In this lesson, I'll address the research method and design information that you need to include in chapter three. I'll also address some general information, ideas and concepts that I find are helpful for you to know and be sure you include in your work to gain that early approval. And then I'll conclude this lesson with a reflective summary. Why this lesson? First and foremost is to help you understand what is needed in these sections in chapter three. Also to help you better design these sections so that you can meet and exceed chapter expectations and get your work approved so you can move forward. The information in chapter three that's related to your research method and design will follow the introduction section in chapter three. Therefore, as you'll know, this will be very early in the chapter. And this is going to be more in depth than what you included in chapter one in the nature of the study section. As you will recall, in chapter one, I addressed that in the nature of the study section, you needed four paragraphs where you were substantiating why your research method and design were appropriate to collect data and why perhaps others were not. While the same general type of information will be included in this chapter, in this heading in particular about your research method and design, but it's going to be more. You're going to have to go in depth here. Remember, chapter one is the introduction chapter to the entire dissertation. Now chapter three is the methodology chapter, and you need to go into great levels of detail to be able to inform the reader why you're using the research method and design that you apply. Now here's a tip. Do not mix terminology from different methods and designs. Oftentimes I'll see a proposal early on where they're confusing words from different research method and designs. If you're going to do a qualitative study, there are certain words and terminology that align well with qualitative research that do not align with quantitative and vice versa. As you become a better consumer of research, and then you become that researcher yourself, you'll gain a better understanding of this. But if you hear or perhaps see comments from committee members that you're mixing terminology, then you'll perhaps understand better by going through this lesson what they mean. And I'll give you some examples. For example, in qualitative research, you are actually going to be doing some information or processing of data in the aspect of an analysis and, and looking at themes. Oftentimes, some of the words you'll see with qualitative research are related to assumptions, beliefs, perceptions, understandings, and exploratory type of research, explanations, or descriptive types of answers or findings that are produced by people who are being interviewed or observed. In many cases, you see this through open-ended questions. As compared to quantitative, where it's more about measuring data, and some of the words that are more commonly used here are predict, cause and effect, correlate, measure, describe, determine, establish relationships, nominal or ordinal types of data. Oftentimes here the questions are related to what extent or to what degree, if any, is there a correlation or cause and effect. If you happen to be mixing these words here that you see here, for example, if you want to measure, it's difficult to measure what you are going to get from interviews in a qualitative study. The words would not align well. This is important to make sure that the words you're using, again, as I always promote, are very specific, succinct, and purposeful. If you're mixing terminology, you are definitely not going to be very specific, succinct, and definitely not purposeful. In this section for chapter three with the research method and design, I encourage you to have at least one full page on the research method. Oftentimes you will need more than one page because of the depth that you have to give. If you're going to be writing about qualitative research, you might want to give a little brief history about what qualitative research is, what its purpose is, what its rationale is, and which actual process you're going to apply and use or employ in your own study you would have then at least one more full page on the research design. Here it's far easier to write more on the research design because it's more specific to what you're going to do. 
Here you might want to elaborate more on the types of surveys you're going to employ, whether that be open-ended questions that you're going to do through interviews or whether it's going to be Likert type survey. But at least one full page on each of these is what you need. Again, in more cases, I have seen in excess of one page, sometimes two full pages on the research design. And if you're going to do a mixed method study, you may actually have more than what I'm saying here because then you have to address both the quantitative and the qualitative aspects of the research method and how they're going to be applied. Support these sections with more than book authors. What I'm indicating here in particular is do not use textbooks or these anthology books where one author, let's say Cresswell, gives you uh, information on every different type of research method and design. Look for the experts that are proven to have a track record in your research method and design. In particular, your research design. There are many people who have produced large amounts of information about different types of research designs. So if you're doing a case study, do not be applying references or sources from those who have done work and promote phenomenological designs. You want to stay consistent with what you're looking at. What I support here and recommend is that you go to your local library or you start to look at SAGE research methods online and you look for the experts in your research method and design and use their works. Your research methods will be one of these three or a combination depending on what you're going to do. If you're doing just a quantitative study or a qualitative study, that'll be a research method. If you're going to combine them somehow and do a mixed method study, then you would write to the mixed method and always relate to mixed methods as your research method, although it will have that quantitative and qualitative component. You need to reflect your understanding of how and why to apply your chosen research method and the framework of the methodology. If you take a holistic view on what you're going to write in regards to research method and design, this is something I should be able to gain a sense of after I read your work in the sense that you're able to reflect that you understand how your research method and design has come to be, why you're going to apply it, and that you have an understanding of the framework. This means if you are going to do a case study, that you fully understand case study work. It's not that you just refer to the fact that you're going to do a case study. You use several experts to show that theoretical framework of what a case study is. How did a case study come to be? Why do we actually do case studies? Why do we do case studies instead of phenomenological studies? This is important that in your work you're able to show that framework just much like you did in chapter one where you had a theoretical framework. Here in chapter three you're going to show the framework for your research method and design. In regards to the mixed method study, if you are going to do one like I did with my work, you'll have to describe which will be done first and then second and the rationale for choosing the order. For example, I did the mixed method study and I had 12 Likert type questions I created and I had three open-ended questions that were in the survey that was given to everybody in the survey population. I addressed that I did the quantitative part first, how I developed the questions, how it came to be, and why I was doing it. Then I had to include how I created the open-ended questions, and they were basically, in my work, one for each of the independent variables that were related to the quantitative side. Then I had to explain why I did that and my rationale for choosing the order because it was most important for me to get the information from the quantitative side, but I did want to do the qualitative open-ended questions, I was able to support which one I would have the survey population complete first and why. I thought it would be best for them to do the quantitative part because that was easier. They had to think more on the open-ended questions. Content supports your knowledge of research questions and how they are aligned with your research method and design. Add value. What I mean by this is as you are writing your research method and design information in chapter three, make sure you have connections and show the alignment, how this is going to go to your research questions. Now, as you write your research method and design information, you may allude to the development of the research questions, but not give the questions during this section. 
What's important for you to understand is that your research method and design should be chosen to provide you the data needed to provide information to answer your research questions. If you alluded to this in your research method section, that the type of data produced by your research method will be the type of data needed to produce information to answer your research question, that's more than enough. In some cases, you just need a paragraph to be able to show that your research method is appropriate to produce the data to give you the information you need. Because the essence of your dissertation is to produce that information that you're going to be able to use to answer your research questions that fundamentally should offer some evidence to the stakeholders and how they can lessen the specific problem that they're experiencing. In your research method, in this first couple paragraphs, you want to clearly explain why the chosen research method, whether it's going to be quantitative, qualitative, or mixed method study, is appropriate for supporting the collection of the data needed to produce information that will answer the research questions. You need to clearly articulate this information. If you cannot, then that's a sign that you need to go back and do some more work. This may take one paragraph, but it may be the whole page or page and a half that one is able to walk away with the clear understanding of why you chose in your research method. Remember, you have to share why, how you're going to do it, and why the rationale for the work that you're doing. As I always talk about in Chapter 3, it's about excruciating details. What often is missing in the early drafts of Chapter 3 is that rationale to support why that research method will produce the type of data to get the valid information. In the research method section of Chapter 3, you also want to clearly explain why the other research method is not appropriate. For example, if you're doing a qualitative phenomenological study, the first part of this section in Chapter 3, you would indicate why qualitative phenomenological study is the best to produce the data you need. You would also show your discerning critical thinking skills and your knowledge of research by explaining why you're not doing a quantitative study. As you write this section, this might be one paragraph, and usually one paragraph is enough, but as you write it, you want to be able to support or defend, if you will, why your research method that you did not chose is correct. Here, you want to be able to simply share with the reader why you chose not to use the different or the other research method. You may want to explain here, again, if you're doing a phenomenological study, why you're not doing a quantitative study and why you're not doing a mixed method study. When you're able to do that clearly and articulate to the reader, it helps the reader to understand that you have a certain amount of expertise about your own research method and design that was chosen. As you're looking at this section that you're writing, if you plan to use triangulation, and some of you will and some will not, this should be alluded to in the research method how so that you're going to do it and the rationale for doing so. In my proposal, I did not include anything about triangulation, but after the data came in, I decided with the guidance of my committee members to triangulate the data. Therefore, I had to go back into chapter three on my dissertation and add that in. You may not know whether you could do triangulation early on, and that's okay. Much like myself, you can go back in and change it later. But in your proposal, if you know you're going to triangulate the data with multiple views of data to kind of improve the reliability of your study, then indicate it in Chapter 3 and the research method. Now I'm going to address information on the research design. The research method, that was about whether you were going to do a quantitative study, a qualitative study, or a mixed method study. Now under the research design, it's going to be what type of specific research you're going to do to collect the data. 
here in the research design, you're going to clearly explain why the chosen research design is appropriate for supporting the collection of the data needed to produce information that will answer the research question or questions, much like you did in the research method, where you explained why you are going to employ your specific research method. Here you're going to do with the same outcome, except you're going to apply it to the research design. Help the reader understand why you chose the research design and how it's going to be appropriate for supporting the data needed to produce information that will answer the research questions. All too often, again, early in Chapter 3 development, there's information about what the design is and why it's being used, but it never goes deep enough to gain the understanding that when the design is applied, it's going to produce data. Now, whether that means by a survey, whether it's Likert type questions or open interviews, that that type of design is appropriate to answer the research questions. If you're not gaining the perception yet through this lesson is that everything that you do with your research method and design has to be aligned with the type of data you need. The type of data you need will be required to answer your chosen research questions. By the time you write this section in chapter three, you will have already decided what those research questions are. You cannot write this section unless you already know what your research questions are. And then much like you did in the research method, you're going to clearly explain why another research design is not appropriate for supporting the data collection needed to answer your research questions. But here the focus is within the same research method. For example, if you're doing a qualitative case study, you've already supported why you're doing the case study. Now you want to describe why you're not doing perhaps a qualitative phenomenological study. This is in the same research method. The idea is that you're looking now at the method and deciding, you know, what is the right design, and which one is not the right design. If you're doing a quantitative study, let's say you're doing a causality study like I did in my dissertation, then you would explain here why you're not doing a correlation design. This would allow the reader to understand that you have the ability to discriminate between the two different designs. As you look at a big picture view of these sections in chapter three, you're ultimately helping the reader to understand why you've chosen your research method and design and why you did not choose others. When all put together, it shows that discerning ability, it shows that you're not only a consumer research, but you understand the value of each research method and design. Now, you don't have to go into great extents to indicate why you didn't use some other method or some other design, but you do need to address it again. One paragraph for each of those would be more than fine to be able to do that. In the research design, again, you want to make sure that your content supports your knowledge of the research questions and how they align with the research method and design. This, again, is adding value. As you're writing your research design and why you've chosen it and how you have been able to justify the rationale for it, relate it back to the research questions. This is what I call closing the loop. When you close the loop and show how your research method and then your research design is appropriate to produce the information you need to answer the research questions, that helps lessen the specific problem for the stakeholders. You're aligning, you're showing great alignment of the research method and design throughout your work. In regards to the research design, basically what kind of data is needed? You should know this before you're writing this section. But as I look at chapter three, in particular to the research method and design sections, I have to walk away with an understanding that you know what kind of data is needed. I have to walk away with a sense of how will the data be collected. In chapter three in the design section, you're going to indicate whether you're gonna do open-ended semi-structured interviews, whether you're going to do like or type survey, how the survey is going to be employed. I need to know and have a sense that you know how the data will be collected. And what is the instrument or instruments that will be used to collect the data? Will that be through an interview? 
with your one-on-one -on -one questions that you're going to ask people or is it going to be through the survey instrument liker type instrument if it's going to be used through something like surveymonkey.com indicate that as well that the survey will be provided through surveymonkey.com and give the specifics on how it's going to process your work you have to give enough information on how the instruments will be used if you're going to do open-ended interview questions you're going to have perhaps a script that'll show how you're going to address each person when you meet them and how the script will go so that everybody gets the same information. Now some of the general information I want to share about chapter three in particular to the information you have to write about your research method and design. References cited. Ground your citations with experts for the chosen research method and design. Again this is where early on in chapter development where students do not go deep enough into their work to show that they're an expert. I encourage you, go to a local library. Look for authors who have published works on your research method and design. Get several different books. You might go to a bookstore if you've got a, a large bookstore in your neighborhood, such as Barnes & Noble, something like that, where you can see different authors. You don't have to buy them all. You can actually look at them and just take information from them while you're having a cup of coffee. Idealistically, you want to have four or five different references in this section from different authors. As I always indicate in the lessons in chapter three, the ability for you to show your discerning knowledge of research is important. This is critical thinking skills. It shows that you are able to reflect why your research method and design is appropriate, why others are not appropriate. In regards to critical thinking, reflect higher order critical thinking skills and how you discriminate between the different methods and designs. Discriminate when you're able to do that, that's a higher level order. Don't just indicate what one author said and what another one offered. You want to be able to show how one is more appropriate than the other. If you're not sure about critical thinking and how to reflect to it in the correct way, then go look online for higher order critical thinking skills and look for some of the verbs and how you relate to your work. If you just say that you have looked and chosen the qualitative method over the quantitative method that may not be well enough. You need to show that you have some discriminating skills and that you're able to analyze both research methods and designs and from that analyze and evaluate the ones that are most appropriate for your work. It's the choice that you make in the words you apply in your dissertation which will decide whether you have a certain amount of academic rigor or not. You must be an expert. You have to come to the understanding that once you have chosen your research method and design, you need to read articles, you need to read books, you need to read other research reports that were done with your research method and design to build that level of expertise. You may be able to get your proposal approved without that certain level of expertise. It will be challenging, but it's possible it will be highly unlikely that you'll get through your dissertation with that same level of knowledge if you're not an expert, particularly as you get to your oral defense when you're asked questions specifically related to your research method and design. Why did you chose it? What does it mean when you did certain calculations or assessments? You've got to become an expert. End result of chapter three, it informs others of your choices and rationale for your choices. For every individual section in chapter three, to include the section that this lesson's about, about the research method and design, ask yourself, have you substantiated the rationale for your choices? All too often, it's easy to put the information in there only that helps the reader to understand what your choices are. The question is, did you give enough information for the rationale for each choice for each section in chapter three? If you've done that, you've got a really good chapter three. And what kind of details are we talking about in chapter three? Yes, excruciating details. Go to the level of detail needed early on. Remember, write in a very specific, succinct, and purposeful way. Use research 
terminology and right in the context of a researcher in chapter three in particular. This is your first chance for your proposal really to show how much you know about research, in particular to your research method and design. One should be able to walk away from your work once they read chapter three and understand that you're not only a consumer of research, but you are a researcher in and and of itself. As part of the reflective summary, I just shared in this lesson information about your research method and design. Some of the highlights, perhaps, of things that you need to include in your chapter three. What I encourage you to do is, if you haven't, go download several dissertations from your university with the same research method and design that were published in the last six to 12 months. Look at how other authors have written their sections in chapter three. Begin to emulate the style that's been recently approved at your university. This will help you better understand how to craft your work and how to emulate the work of others. Again, please do not copy their work. That would be plagiarism. But oftentimes you can look and find out what references they applied and then go pull those references yourself and use them yourself with your own words. Then I conclude with some general information just to help you better understand the critical aspects of chapter three and what's really important. And what's really important is that you have given the reader the sense of what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and the rationale for what you're going to do. At the very end of chapter three, if written well, anybody else should be able to pick up your chapter three and do your research the same way you would have done it, knowing exactly why they're doing each step. If you have that level of detail in chapter three, then you have written yourself a fantastic chapter. I'm Dr. Rich Shuttler. If you want more information on other related programs, you can certainly go to my website at drrichshuttler.com. And much like your dissertation, I do believe that education is a lot like life. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And particularly in your proposal, the more you can put into your proposal as far as rigor, and reflecting your critical thinking skills, you will have a better opportunity to get your work approved sooner. 